So welcome back, and if you've never been here before, my name's Matt, and this is Secondhand Home Theater. My channel's dedicated to just that, talking about home theater topics, but doing it through the lens of secondhand items and used items, and letting you know how to find good deals, and just talking about used items in general in the home theater environment. But here today, we're not discussing anything like that. I'm actually talking about my experience at the Alamo Draft House in St. Louis, Missouri, and my experience going there for the very first time and watching Alien Romulus this past weekend. So just to begin with, a little bit of backstory for those of you who may not be aware if you haven't watched any of my content before. I'm in a somewhat unique position here because I live in a very small rural community. I live out in the country in central Illinois. So I don't have any big chain movie theaters really nearby, but you have to drive a minimum of an hour to go to a bigger chain theater. Here in my small little rural community, in the small town that I live outside of, we have a small family run theater. It's very small, it's two screens, it's in a historical building, and it's really neat for what it is, and it has one really good positive that I'm gonna talk about later on in the video. But by and large, I think even the owners and the people who work there would tell you that it is nowhere near the quality that you would get going to, say, an IMAX theater or a Dolby Cinema or definitely a bigger chain theater that has a lot more money invested in it. But that's not to say that the small town theater I go to is bad or that it's terrible, because it's not. It's actually really good quality for what you get there. For this situation, going to see Alien Romulus, I really wanted to make it an experience and really a step above going to my small town theater. Plus, I did not know if my small town theater would actually play this movie, because the clientele that we have around here, admittedly, doesn't always take to certain modern movies. So they're somewhat selective on movies that they actually play. And typically, because that theater is two screens, there's a bigger auditorium style screen uh, for the space, of course, on the first floor. And then the upstairs part is a very like almost micro theater kind of vibe, very small uh, area. So generally what they do is they'll have a more bigger budget movie, say like a Marvel movie or a DC movie, superhero movie, you know, something more popular like that in the bigger screen. And then they usually will run either a kid's movie or something more family friendly or maybe something more like a romance or a comedy movie in the smaller screen, like upstairs. So, like I said, I wasn't 100% sure that Alien Romulus would even get shown here in my small town. But the main reason, honestly, was because since I love this franchise so much and that hype had really built up around this movie, that I wanted to see it in the best quality possible. That I really wanted it to be an experience, be an, an event, you know, to actually see this movie for the first time in the theater. There is an Alamo Draft House that opened a few years ago at the Foundry in St. Louis, Missouri. And it's not like a normal commercial movie chain. So you have not only premium seating with reclining leather seats, you get to order full menus of food, uh, and they theme food based around movies that are playing. Not only do they show modern releases, they also show classic and cult classic catalog releases, and they do themed kind of things around that. And the entire building is always styled to replicate historical movies and just the history of cinema. So really the Alamo Draft Houses are tailored to the moviegoers who love movies and not just to the general mass audiences. The first thing you notice when you walk in the doors is the carpet and it uses the same carpet design like the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. And also they have to the left when you walk in the doors a giant like 10 foot mock-up statue of the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is really neat and definitely something you don't see at a lot of movie theaters. And this Alamo Draft House was set up a little bit differently because it doesn't have the expansive gift shop that I've seen in some other videos for other locations. So the actual gift shop was way uh, slimmed down. It was mainly just like a little cutout 
along the one wall with a couple of items in there. So the gift shop was not as big as what some of the other theaters were. But when you walk in, you see the carpet, you see this black knight. They had a large scale poster for Alien Romulus, uh, which I used for my movie review thumbnail, and you'll probably see the picture pop in here. Uh, so that was really cool. Then of course, because it's a draft house, they have a bar area with all kinds of beers on tap and different things. So you go in there, you see the bar area, you see this carpeting, and then you turn down these corridors to where all the actual theaters are at. And again, you have the iconic carpeting, but they also have all these cool vintage posters. And they're not just American posters, they have a lot of foreign posters that are in there. And so that's just, the walls are lined, just the entire hallways of these posters, which are just really cool. But I did also catch a vibe that this theater really has a lot of Monty Python based material. So there were a lot of Monty Python posters. There was the Black Knight statue that was by the front door. So they really had a lot of that. But overall the ambiance, just the feel of when you walk in there, is just really cool. And it really shows that they are lovers of cinema, of movies and filmmaking. And you know, it's all just right there when you walk in. One of the other big reasons I wanted to go to the Alamo Draft House, outside of the fact I had never been there before, was that they have their version, more or less, of what would be considered an IMAX or a Dolby Cinema, I guess. And that's called The Big Show. And it's stylized kind of, like I said, how IMAX or Dolby Cinema would be. It has the biggest screen that they have in their theater. It has the most premium seating. It has the most premium audio experience. And it has the most high-end projection system. And they only run certain films in the big show theater. It's usually some big, high-budget, action, sci-fi, special effect movie is usually what plays in the big show. You know, that's going to give you the big bombastic audio and the the big picture experience. So that was a big selling point as to why I wanted to go there was because Alien Romulus, at least for opening weekend, was playing in the big show screen before it got moved into the smaller standard screens. So I really wanted to see it there and I wanted to experience it, like I said, as an event to really like be memorable and to see you know what what it was going to be like here in the biggest best quality i could get in this area and so that takes me into actually going into the theater into the big show now i have some b-roll you'll see of the entrance to the theater but because there's a lot of people in there and a lot of staff and a lot of stuff going on and a lot of like various previews and things that i'll get to in one second playing before and after the film was over I didn't film in the actual theater because I didn't want to get in trouble with the staff and I didn't want to have other patrons that were there be upset that they were getting in the video because like I said the theater was actually pretty much full. It was like 75-80% full for our showing. So I want to be respectful so I didn't do that. So when we go in it like I said more or less is like the Alamo Draft House version of an IMAX or a Dolby Cinema screen. So the screen is huge. I don't know the actual dimensions. I'll look on their website and pop it in here if I can find the actual dimensions of the screen. But it's basically like an IMAX screen. It is huge. They use a Sony like 4K or 8K like crystal projection system. So the picture is really clear and really detailed, really vibrant. They have a Dolby Atmos setup with, I was trying to count, I mean, there was probably 30 speakers at least that I could see on the walls and the ceiling of this theater. Uh, so that whole part of it is just really cool. And then you go to the seating and because it's their premium auditorium, you have more space. So you have more leg room and more table space for your food than what you would get in the normal theaters. And the seats I bought were actually in the handicapped row, I guess you would say, which is a little side note uh, about my personal life. I work full time for a developmentally disabled home. And so I really applaud the Alamo Draft House for putting their handicapped accessible seating in a premium viewing location. Because when I would go on activities to a lot of places with the residents that I work with that are developmentally disabled, 
the handicapped accessible seating is usually pushed off to a side. It's off to the left or the right or tucked back in a corner near an exit or near an easy, you know, access point. And those seats usually are not fully taken into account for premium viewing. Where the Alamo Draft House, and I assume this will apply to all the locations, has that handicapped accessible seating smack dab right in the middle of the row that we were in, right in the middle of the auditorium. So ideally, except for maybe one row behind where the handicapped accessible seating is, the most premium spot you would want to sit in is in that handicapped accessible section. So I really applaud Alamo Draft House for doing that and allowing for someone who couldn't sit in a normal seat to get the best experience possible. And so I definitely want to shout them out for that. That's a really cool feature. And there were actually quite a few uh, handicapped patrons that were there during the showing. But to get back to our seating, we were seated in the actual handicapped accessible row. But instead of being in the middle section where all the actual handicapped seating is, off to the left and off to the right of that, there's a handful of seats that are outside the handicapped section that are for general audiences. And because of my work schedule and I didn't know when we were going to be able to actually go to see Alien Romulus there, I wasn't able to pick one of what I would have considered a more premium location in the middle of the screen, kind of further back in the theater. As I said, there was like 75, 80% of this theater filled up and all those premium seats were already taken. So we were kind of going to be pushed out to the out skirts of the theater a little bit, no matter what row we picked. But I will say I'm extremely happy that I picked the first two seats just to the right of the handicapped accessible area. And it was really nice because you had more space, more leg room and everything because the row is set up for handicapped accessible patrons. So for wheelchairs and different things. So you have a little bit more space. And it's close enough that you really get immersed in the picture. And even though it's slightly off center, the viewing angles were great for where we were seated. So one other neat feature with Alamo Draft House that I haven't really seen anywhere else is that while most theaters just run trailers and run ads, or maybe they run commercials for like popcorn and candy, you know, whatever, before the movie starts, Alamo Draft House, especially for the big show screenings, run interstitials and kind of like promo stuff really centered around the movie you're going to watch. So for Alien Romulus, it was all based around the Alien franchise, the history of the franchise, and H.R. Giger. So it had music videos that were directed by H.R. Giger way back from like the 70s, early 80s that I never knew existed that were honestly kind of weird, but fun to watch. It showed a little like animated skit about H.R. Giger, which was kind of funny. It also showed a commercial for the Operation Aliens toy line, which I have a bunch of those toys up on my shelf and I actually talked about those in another video. Uh, so that was really cool. It also showed kind of a viral clip that's floated around the internet for a number of years of a Texas-based uh, news channel that went out to interview families that were taking their children in to see the original Alien back in 1979. So it was showing those clips as well, and it showed the full uh, clip, the full segment from the actual news broadcast, which a lot of times online it's just kind of clipped and trimmed down to just like a little one-minute segment. That was really cool, too, to just like see all this uh, stuff that's revolving around the Alien franchise and kind of giving you a history and giving you information about what you're going to watch without directly telling you about the movie you're going to watch. It kind of just shows you all this stuff that's on the outskirts of it, you know, on the expanded kind of like pop culture references. So that was really cool. And they recommend getting there 30 minutes early to see this pre-show stuff. So another cool feature and another reason why we wanted to go to the Alamo Draft House is you can order full meals or snack food or whatever you want while you're there watching the movie. You can order your food when you first get into the theater and that food will either show up before the main movie starts so you can like eat, you know, if you're getting a pizza or a cheeseburger or something, you can eat that before the house lights go down and then, you know, it's kind of dark and it's hard to see what you're doing. Or 
it'll show up right around the start of the movie. So if you order popcorn or other like snack style food, you'll get it as soon as the movie's getting ready to start. You know, so it's, it's really nice to do that. So talking about the food real quick, the menu is pretty good. It's themed around not only the area you live in, but also the themes that they run for the theater. So like this year it was based on uh, 1984 for like the 40th anniversary of films that came out in 1984. So they had a lot of food items that were themed around uh, 1984 and those films that came out at that time period. But they also do themed food for like the big budget releases that are releasing. So for Alien Romulus, they had a handful of alien themed food items. By the way, you can check out their YouTube page and they have a really fun little trailer video thing about the alien romulus food items which i thought was really cool it's really fun uh, so definitely search that on youtube and check it out it's like a one or two minute little thing but i think it's really cool but anyway so you can get you know all these different food items and they have some standardized food that's just on the menu the whole time but it ranges quite a variety while they do offer cheeseburgers they offer like pizza especially for the area where this theater is located they had a St. Louis style pizza, which uses like Provel cheese and some more like St. Louis staples, but it's just some other regular pizzas too, cheese, pepperoni, sausage, whatever. They offer, like I said, cheeseburgers, the chicken sandwiches, club sandwiches, salads, kind of like taco bowl type thing. So they have quite a few options. Again, you're not gonna get like a big steak dinner you know, there, but they have quite a few options. For me and my wife, we decided not to go too overboard with like the burgers or pizza or anything. We got a loaded french fry uh, basket, which was really good. We got the alien themed nachos, which were, they were escape hatch chili nachos, which are really good. We also got an order of their mini corn dogs which technically is on the kids menu, but our server was really cool and he's like, yeah, I don't care, you can order it. So, so we got the mini corn dogs to share. And then uh, I just got a, a soda. And so my wife also got a zero gravity alcoholic milkshake, but it's off the Alien Romulus themed menu. So it's supposed to look like the weird synthetic fluid that all the androids have. So that was kind of neat too. Uh, but overall the food, was really good. It was hot when it came out. It was ordered and prepared quickly, uh, you know. So really the food was, was really good and definitely a step above the popcorn. Now I've heard a lot of things online. The popcorn there supposedly is really good, but since my wife and I hadn't really eaten anything and we really wanted to try more regular food when we got there, we decided to pass on the popcorn. But I have heard that the regular popcorn and the various flavors you can get of the popcorn is actually really good. And I've seen a lot of like Reddit forums and stuff that talk about their different popcorn flavors being really good. So I'll take their word for it. And maybe if we go back there another time, uh, the popcorn may be something that I try, but at least this time we stuck more with appetizer, more event fair kind of food. So when talking about like food in that, I'm gonna talk about the service. And the server we had, his name was Mateo. He was really cool, and he came over immediately as soon as we sat down, started getting our orders in, uh, was real friendly and explained what the food items were if we had any questions, gave his recommendations about what are the most popular items that he sees people uh, order. And one other side note with that, he noticed immediately my shirt I was wearing that I had custom made for my channel and to go and see this, and so he immediately uh, mentioned that to me when we sat down and asked me where I got the shirt and everything and we got to talk about that for a minute or two and so for that you know I'm giving a shout out to Mateo I don't know if you are going to watch this video or not because I put underneath the tip on the receipt my YouTube channel <laughs> and wrote it down and told him to subscribe to my channel so if you're out there if you see this you did a great job and I really appreciate you you know noticing my shirt and talking to me about that the service was speedy it was quick uh, you know, once the orders went in, it was only a couple minutes and then the food was there for us. But also talking about service for the food, because that was great. I want to talk about the actual viewing experience. Like I said in my little intro and earlier on in this video, the Alamo Draft House is really themed about the movie going experience and being themed for the movie goer that loves movies, not just the general audience. A couple minutes before the movie starts, they run 
a big trailer kind of thing and they make it known immediately from that point on the auditorium is to be silent so you need to turn your phones off uh, or turn them on vibrate at a minimum don't look at your phone don't talk to people nothing that it is a quiet zone when that movie is running and if you break that rule and start talking or look at your cell phone and become a distraction they will immediately throw you out without a refund they'll give you one warning and then they're going to throw you out because the whole point of this is to experience the movie and while that may rub some people the wrong way and may seem kind of like a harsh policy i also understand why they do it because they make no bones about it it's on their website when you look at the website when you're there you're there for the movie going experience so if you're going to be a distraction they're going to get rid of you because that's why you go there and why you pay the premium pricing that you pay to go there is to be in a quiet fully immersed experience so it may be kind of harsh but i understand why they do it and thankfully for our showing there was no distractions everyone adhered to the rules and everything was you know cool with everybody there was no problems but they do make it very well known up front that if you break that rule they will throw you out no questions asked so you may wonder if you can't talk and they don't want these distractions how do you signal to your servers and stuff that you need a refill or you want to order something else basically you do it with these little cards that are on the actual tables you write in what you want and you kind of fold it up and you sit it on a little placard that's on the front of every one of the seats that you're sitting in. You sit it there, the servers are just basically aligned across the outside walls of the theater. They will see that you put your little card in there, they can see it. They come and they like, not really army crawl, but they kind of like almost crawl on the ground in front of the seats so they're not a distraction. Come over, grab your little card, put it in their little notebook or in their little iPad, and then they scurry off. And then, you know, when they come back a few minutes later, they'll kind of same thing, kind of just crouch down and crawl in and give you your stuff and then scurry back off. So it's kind of funny uh, with that, but that's how you signal to your servers you need something. Uh, same thing if there is a distraction, which we didn't have any during our showing, but if there was a distraction, you do the same thing. You would put your card up there, write in that a person behind you or this person over here is causing a problem. You write it in there and then they run off, they get their manager, and then they come in and handle the situation. Which does lead to a little bit of an amusing thing. Uh, as I mentioned in my other videos, especially in the one about me hitting my head and getting the concussion, uh, I'm a relatively big guy. And so when I had the seats reclined up and my feet hanging out, uh, Mateo, who is our server, almost had to like lay on the ground and crawl under my legs because my legs were all the way out touching the row in front of me. <laughs> so I had to like quickly hit the button, you know, to try and like move my seat up and get my legs out the way so he could get by to, you know, my wife to get her her thing or to get to the other customers, you know, to the side of us. But uh, that was <laughs> kind of funny. And so definitely if you are a bigger person, that can cause some problems. And I look at it and think, as much as I think it'd be cool to work there, if I ever got a job at an Alamo Draft House, I could not be one of the servers that runs in and out because my big self trying to get in there and stay out of people's way would probably not work very well. So, uh, but that was just kind of a funny little antidote about, you know, sitting there in that theater. Okay, so let's talk about probably one of the biggest reasons someone like you who's watching this video clicked on it to begin with. What's the actual viewing experience like when the movie comes on? Honestly, I can probably say this is the coolest, best experience I had watching a movie maybe ever in my life. Maybe one other time tops it, but it's more for nostalgia reasons. But in terms of overall picture quality, sound quality, immersiveness, this is probably the best experience I ever had. The picture quality is crystal clear, vibrant colors, the Sony projection system they use is very high-end. Uh, I mean, it's really good. They have a full theater-style Dolby Atmos setup. I mean, like I said earlier in the video, I counted at least 30 speakers all around the walls and the ceiling to really envelop you in sound. A ton of bass, but it's not overdone. Uh, it's loud, it's punchy, but again, it's not overbearing to where it's going to hurt your ears or do anything. It's just a really cool, immersive experience. And you would think, 
like I said a few minutes ago, with the servers constantly running in and out as people are wanting things, that that would distract from the movie. And maybe it was from where we were sitting because we were up a little bit further in the theater and not like back in the more stadium style seating that they had. But at least where we were sitting, the servers were not interfering with the experience at all. Outside of like my little antidote of me kind of had my feet up and caused the problem. But outside of that, they were not a distraction at all. Like you never would really even know they were there. They would just kind of scurry around you in and out real quick and you would never notice it. So the overall picture quality, the sound quality was really immersive. And like I said, outside of maybe for nostalgia reasons, this was the best experience I've probably had in my adult life, watching a movie at a theater. That basically encompasses the actual experience there. I do want to touch on a few other things. Uh, one kind of odd thing, and then one, not really negative, but one kind of thing that is kind of weird because of the unique situation I'm in, that I'll get to in a second. One odd thing that I did notice, and I don't know if this applies to all of the Alamo Draft Houses or just the one in St. Louis. We ordered our tickets online, so we had the screenshot on our phones to scan to get in with the tickets. When we go in there, you see a sign that says if you already have tickets, you know, go to the assigned theater where your movie is playing. So we just walked by the little ticketing booth right into the theater. You know, we looked around, whatever, but we just walked right into our theater and sat down. So throughout the entire course from walking in the door, looking at everything, sitting down in our seats, ordering our food, watching the entire movie, and then paying at the end and leaving, not one time did any server come to actually look at our ticket to see if we actually had a ticket to be there. I don't know if they have a way to like scan that or figure out that you already signed in because there was no way to do that. Or if they were just so busy, they just didn't do it or they take it on good faith that you're there because of that. Uh, but I could potentially see a situation where you could sneak in to one of these movies and not have a ticket. And if they don't actually check to see your ticket, you could just get in and watch the movie and not have to pay for it. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't advocate that to anyone to do that, but I did find it a little odd that no one came by to actually check to see if we had tickets to be there. I don't know if it was just this showing or this theater or whatever, or if that's kind of a common practice, but that did strike me odd a little bit. So now I wanna talk about pricing, which I wanna put this out there. This is more relevant to me in my situation because it's kind of unique and I don't think this is gonna to apply to everybody. But I do just wanna mention this because this is part of the experience for me. What I talked about earlier in the video and I've mentioned in a couple other videos, our small town theater that's family run here in this rural community has what they call the best movie deal. So your entire cost of the ticket, the popcorn and the drink, candy's not included, but the popcorn and soda is, is all included in your ticket price. And so you can go and spend, I think a regular is like 12 or $13. And then a large is like 15 or $16. But you pay that one price and you get your ticket, your soda and your popcorn all included. The only additional concession you would pay for would be candy. So that kind of makes me a little bit jaded in pricing because I've lived for almost 20 years in an environment where for me and my wife to go to the movie theater, even if we were to both buy large popcorns with our tickets, we're spending like maybe $30, give or take, where just the tickets alone was like $32 to get in to the showing. And we went to a matinee show. So the actual primetime showings are even more expensive. So we paid over $30 just for the tickets. And then when we got there, all said and done, after we bought all the food and the drink and everything, my grand total bill for my actual trip there was about $130, which maybe in the grand scheme of things, when you factor in like the entire breadth of the United States and big cities, that may not seem like a whole lot of money. It may seem kind of in line with what people pay at big movie theaters. But at least for me, in my situation, while it was really a good quality, you know, picture and really cool experience and the fact that I wanted to make Alien Romulus an event because I love the series, $130 is really pushing it <laughs> on me of really, you know, do I want to spend that much again? And if I were to go back, 
I definitely think we would maybe skip out on some of the more expensive food and just stick with getting a soda, getting the bottomless popcorn, and with that, the popcorn's like 10 or $11, your soda's like three or four bucks, whatever. So even if my wife and I each got a drink and the popcorn, you're probably then looking all in with the tickets, maybe like $50, $60, which still seems like a lot to me, but really is a lot better uh, cost-wise than what we did when we went to see this movie this weekend. But I understand, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, things are not cheap nowadays. So going to an AMC or a Regal Theater or whatever, you may end up spending that kind of money. So you're definitely getting the value going to the Alamo Draft House versus an AMC theater, let's say, because of the premium service, the premium food, the premium experience you're getting. But just to be completely transparent with everybody out there, with my situation, the fact that we have a theater where for $30, my wife and I can go and see a movie and get our drink and popcorn all included. $130 is a bit much in my mind, but definitely worth it if you're in an area where that is kind of the going rate for going to the movie theater. You're gonna get a much better value going to an Alamo Draft House than going to an AMC or a Regal Theater somewhere else. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Uh, like some of my other videos I've posted recently, I've tried to cut down as much as I can to keep them kind of uh, as trim and as slim as possible. But I tend, I like to ramble and I like to actually give a lot of exposition about what's going on. So I'm sure this video is probably gonna be like 20, 30, 40 minutes, something stupid like that. But I do wanna wrap this video up and ultimately at the end of the day with this video, was this experience worth it to go see Alien Romulus at the Alamo Draft House? Is the Alamo Draft House worth your time and your money to go see a movie there. This is definitely two thumbs up. I definitely recommend going to an Alamo Draft House. And for me, the pricing was a little bit high and a bit much and a bit excessive for me, but our situation, my situation, is really kind of unique with our movie going experience that we have here in this rural area. But I can definitely see in a bigger city that has regular chain theaters, Going to an Alamo Draft House is definitely a much better value than what you're gonna get going to just a standard big chain movie theater. So for that, and the, the fact that I got to see a movie I was extremely hyped to see, and I got to sit there with just a big smile on my face the entire time, definitely a thumbs up, definitely go to an Alamo Draft House if you have the chance to go see a big budget movie or even a cult classic or something that you really cherish and you wanna see in really high quality. So definitely go and do it. Leave a comment down below uh, let me know if you've seen movies at the Alamo Draft House. You know, if you have where in the U.S. you've been to see it, and if your experience has been similar to mine. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say thank you again, uh, like I always do. I appreciate everyone who's stuck through this video and my ramblings to actually, you know, like and subscribe and give me feedback. I really do appreciate it. So with that, I will see you in my next video where I'm going to get back to my normal home theater content, and I'll see you in the future on secondhand home theater.